Hello! If you like to make quilts or embroideries and would like to know how to put them in a fabric frame that is beautiful and simple to make, or if you just want to make one chalk or cork board with a fabric frame, then this video is for you. That's another idea of having fun with paper, fabric and glue using cartonage technique and making something different and unique. If you like this idea, stay here with me! I'm Claudia Skill, a cartonage designer and teacher from Colorway Arts. With cartonage, we can make beautiful and unique fabric boxes of all sizes and shapes, but more than that, we can also make fabric covers and so many other pieces. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make one fabric frame that is uh, super simple to make and that will help you to show up your arts in a beautiful way. First of all, I have to say that I'm not a quilter, but since most of my students are, I have like started learning a little bit how to sew. And what I'm most interested in is in learning how to make quilt arts. You know, having more fun and playing even more with fabric. So uh, I can say I'm just a beginner in quilts and <laughs> sewing. And I have been learning from the book, uh, The Landscape Quilt Arts from Anne Loveless. Uh, and a few other uh, teachers as well. As I said, I have so much to learn, but I'm practicing and having fun and I know that I will be better soon. So what I will be showing here is the fabric frame I made to use with my quilt arts. And then I will be also showing uh, other options that I have tested so far. Hope you like it and can't wait to see what like experienced quilters or embroideries will make out of this idea. Then, let's get started! The materials are very simple. You will need two pieces of chipboard, the size you want to make your frame, a scissor, rotary cutter, cutting board, ruler, uh, and a craft knife or other paper cutting tool to cut the chipboard. If you prefer, you can use my do-it-yourself kit with the pieces already cut in the size of 12 by 10 inches that is available in my online shop. Another optional material is the Corner Miter tool that you also are gonna find in my online shop. Then grab the fabric you want to make the frame. I like to coordinate with the art we'll be framing. And a small piece of ribbon, around 6 inches, and one paper roll to make a small hole. We will use glue all from Elmer's and to spread the glue, we will need roller paint and paintbrush. We also need masking tape. Uh, and one scrap paper to protect the table and a piece of cloth to clean your hands. We also need one heavy book and if you prefer, you can use an acid-free PVA, white PVA glue like this one. Then of course, you need your quilt art or embroidery or your kids arts or you may make this frame as a chalkboard or a corkboard and then you also need those materials. So before starting the process of making the frame, let me show you a few of frames I have made so far and some options of using, okay? So uh, here I have one that I made um, following a picture, okay? So this is just that the same size of frame I'm gonna be making today. And so here it was my quilt art. This is another one that I made also out of one uh, leg scene here, in a picture we took in summertime. And for this one, I made in two sizes. So I want to show you that if you cut in a different size, then you can have another frame. Uh, so depending on the size of our, your art or your embroidery, whatever we are adding here, uh, you can cut the chipboard and make the size you want, okay? I have the do-it-yourself kit only for this size here, that is uh, 12 inches by 10 inches, okay? This is another one I made recently. I kind of regret the choosing this fabric for the frame, but that's the way it is, I'm learning, okay? Uh, and then a few different things. This one I want just to try and see how it would be if I would just make one uh, 
normal quilt, you know, and then I put some flower appliques, some flowers on top, and then that's another idea. And this one here I made with my I hand dyed fabric, and then I made a kind of a mandala here, and then I also uh, this is the frame. Uh, and the last one I want to show you. Uh, I bought this uh, embroidery, uh, this, uh, it's a cross stitch in one uh, shop and then I didn't like the frame so I chose one fabric that I liked to coordinate and then I made the frame for it, okay? Also let me show you how of then I like to put a piece of ribbon on the bottom, on the back, kind of center but I can, you know, when I hang it I can always find the right position for it. But if you want, I'll show you later other options you can use to put the, uh, to hang it. So now let's make the frame. So I'm gonna be using uh, my do-it-yourself kit 161, that is the fabric frame. It comes with the two pieces of chipboard you need to make the frame. One to put on the front and another one to put on the back, okay? They are all already cut in the size you need. And let me show you here. So those are those pieces, piece number one, that is the front, and then piece number two, that is the back, okay? Um, again, you can make this frame any size one. In this case here, I made 12 inches by 10 inches, and my frame here is one three eighths, okay? So, uh, you know, you can do larger here, you can do thinner, you can do whatever you want, Okay, it's up to you. Uh, the only thing I would like to say, the chipboard I use and I have tested and I know it's good, it's sturdy, uh, it has not been like bending or thing like that. So uh, I use a hundred point chipboard. It's a, a really thick chipboard. So if you don't have this one and if you are using something that's much more thinner like matte board or thing like that, then I would put at least like I glue two pieces together for the back so that will be more sturdy okay that's one option and always keep in mind that cutting chipboard the more thick is the chipboard more difficult it is to cut okay and to make to cut this inside part here it's kind of more um, I'd say kind of a little bit more complicated but just if you haven't seen my video talking about chipboard, what kind to use and how to cut the chipboard, please watch this video. It's in my YouTube channel, it's in my free online course. Uh, I do recommend because cutting chipboard is always something that I would like you to do in a safe way, okay? And uh, so I, in this video I'm showing a few of the tools I have. You may have a different tool to cut, but you can use from a, a simple craft knife and you can go for, you know, different uh, paper cut tools, okay? So once you have these two pieces here, so this, again, let me repeat, the external part are all 10 by 12 and then the, this part here is one inch and three eighths, okay? Or three and a half centimeters if you prefer. And then you mark all around, make another rectangle and then you cut it, okay? So this is the front. So in my kit, the front piece is piece number one and this back piece is piece number two, okay? And now we're gonna start making uh, piece number covering piece number two with fabric. So the first thing we have to think is what fabric you know we're gonna use to cover the frame. Uh, so let me show you here the art I made uh, to frame today. Okay, it was it is this one, and well I was you know not, not able to make the cat myself, so I just print the picture of him my. Um, uh, in my printer and then I made the rest according to the picture we took here at home uh, his name is magic and I love it so much so I decided to make uh, a frame for it well so uh, what I used do I used to do when all, when I want to know which fabric I want so for example one idea is to cut a piece of fabric or 
you know, open your fabric and then put your art uh, and then see if you like the combination, you know. Uh, in this case, uh, I have a Facebook group, a cartonage Facebook group, and then I put a picture of my art with three or four uh, fabrics around and they, you know, we have lots of uh, very talented quilters there and then they said they recommend me to use a light color i was kind of choosing something more black or green and then i really like they said use use a light color so your art will show up better so take your time see what you have at home with fabric and choose the best fabric to make your frame okay yeah, so we only need two pieces of fabric. You can use the same fabric for the front and the top or you can use different ones, but you will not really see the back, okay? So I usually do the same fabric for both. And well, the piece of fabric you need is gonna be kind of half an inch big all around of piece two, okay? So we're gonna start covering piece two now and the fabric is kind of half an inch bigger around. So we're gonna use uh, one scrap of paper to apply glue over. If you already saw some of my videos, you know I always do that. Okay, and then I have here my cutting board and my fabric is upside, wrong side up, okay? So I'm gonna apply glue here and the glue I'm gonna use now is Glue All from Elmer's. I always use this glue and all that frame, I, I use that glue. So, but here I have one thing. Some people are kind of concerned like about using glue out sometimes because uh, I'd say this is a white PVA, but it's not acid free, okay? But I have like samples of more than uh, five years in my home. They are exactly the same. This chipboard is completely acid free, okay? So when I use that glue, that chipboard kind of absorbs the little acid we have here so that's one of the things i know something i have researched and we can talk about this later uh, more uh, another day but if you are concerned that the glue can damage your quilt or your embroidery that's completely okay and then one of the options i would recommend you to use is this glue here it's pva glue it's from lineco okay it's for book binders and you can really use this glue it's very good and you can use for the whole piece or you can only use with the piece that is more in contact with your art okay so that's up to you okay then we're gonna start put some glue over the uh, back of our piece number two in this case and we're gonna be using the roller paint now so what i like to do i like to put some glue on my roller on my tray and then roll my roller like this then it's gonna be easier for me to spread the glue here. And then we'll just go and spread this glue very well. So it's gonna be a thin layer all the way, okay? And I don't want you to leave like large, I don't want to leave like something like this, a lot of glue, so spread very well, but also make sure your glue is not dry, so kind kind of try to be as quick as you can okay once you have glue all over your piece then you go on the wrong side of your fabric right on the middle okay and then you press a little bit flip over and then you go with your hands and you make sure it's all glue okay if you want to use a spatula something over after smoothing with your hand that's okay okay now uh, we need to fold this fabric around okay and here when i do that you see we have too much fabric here on the corner and you may be familiar with my corner my tattoo maybe not but this is the tool i use to cut this extra fabric okay some people gonna just go ahead and cut with scissor right here what i want to have here is kind of 45 degrees and leave a little bit of fabric we don't cut straight with the chipboard okay so let me cut with my 
uh, my tool and then I will show you. This is my corner miter tool we put right there and then you go with your cutter and cut. Okay, so now I have exactly what I need here. A little bit of fabric uh, between, you know, the beginning of the fabric and the chipboard. We have a little space here that's going to be have, uh, uh, allow me to have a great finishing. Okay, and kind of 45 degrees. Okay, so if you don't have this tool, just go ahead and cut with scissors, trying to leave 45 degrees and a little space there. That space is kind of around the same thickness of your chipboard. Okay. So, very good. I cut out four corners. Good. And then we're going to start uh, finishing this with the long edge. I like to start with the longest edge first, but well. Okay, then we spread the glue all over. You come with your glue print. And something really important to have a good finishing, we also need to have glue right here on this corner, on both corners, okay? On the fabric, that part, oh, I don't like to use my, my cutter, my mat for that. Let's put here, okay? So here is the position I want you to have glue and also here on both corners, okay? Then you go with your spatula and put under and bring your fabric very tight okay this is something very this is something very important you have to go tight with the fabric right here close to the corner then that's something that will give you a very, very good finish and then you press down that's another important thing you press down very well right here in this corner good Okay, once you do that, you go to the other side and then you repeat your process. So spread the glue, then spread glue right here on both corners and then go with your spatula and bring your fabric. Okay, and press and press. Good, so now I need to finish the other two sides, then we spread the glue there. I don't go with the glue over the fabric right here on the edges, only over the chipboard. And then I go over the fabric here on the bottom, on the two edges, okay? And then you put your spatula under and bring tight, okay? So that will give me, that will give me a good finishing, good corners here, okay? And then it's time to do the same on the other side. Spread the glue. Here and here over the fabric. And then bring your fabric very tight. Okay. So, for example, here you may notice I just apply glue to one of the sides. Your tipo are maybe be a little bent at this point, okay, because it's not ready, it's wet, so something, um, two things you can have here, sometimes I just do a little bit, you know, of this in the other directions of, uh, of you know, the piece of paper is bending, that helps, but the most important is put something heavy over, okay, uh, we're gonna be finishing, when you completely finish this frame, you put something heavy and you keep like that for a long time. But right now, while I will be making the front frame, I will do the same. So I will put this piece right here on my side, okay? And I will put something, one book, heavy book, over. So that something's gonna start helping this piece to dry flat. Now it's time to cover the front part of the frame. You know, and I'm gonna use the same fabric. You can use a different one if you want, okay? That's okay. Uh, if you are using uh, my kit, uh, the pieces have some numbers. So I do recommend you to apply glue to the other side, not to the stamped side, just because if you are like, if your fabric is light, you may see your number and that's not good. So <laughs> you just spread the glue on the other side. So it's Kind of the same we did before, just a little different because we have to, you know, 
to do the detail in the, in the middle. So spread the glue all over. Make sure very well. It's kind of dry here in my house and you know, I'm just starting so my roller is not full of glue. I'm gonna put a little bit more. Then I apply glue all over that part of the frame and then I put right there on the middle, okay, on the wrong side of the fabric. And then over the same we did before. We don't need to iron fabric when we are, you know, using cartonage, making cartonage projects because like now you can see I'm pressing over. So that helps me, you know, to remove the wrinkles. Okay, so here we have to do, um, first let's do the same I did for the other one because we, again, we're gonna be folding out this like this. So just go ahead and cut the fabric from our corners. That's the first thing. And then the second thing we need to cut and I would like, you can use scissor for everything or you can go with your rotary cutter and do the middle, it's up to you. It is just that I want you to leave around half an inch, maybe a little bit less than half an inch inside here, okay? So you can do that using your cutter again or you can just go with your scissor that don't, you know, you don't need to cut straight and neat, okay? If you go with scissor like this, no, no problem. Because we're gonna be gluing here, no one will see, okay? Good, so once you did that, we have to use the scissor and go right there on the corners and cut straight till the end of the, uh, till the paper, okay? So do that for the four sides. Okay, and then we're gonna, uh, I will be finishing the inside first and then the outside is the same as we did before. But let's do that. So we spread the glue on one side, one internal edge here, and then you will help with your okay, with your plastic, uh, with your spatula. And then you go, actually you don't need to go opposite sides because we're gonna be folding our sides. There's no, you know, right or wrong here. You only need to do that. Uh, if In case we bring our spatula and we have glue uh, on that, just clean because uh, if you are using like a dark fabric or something like that, probably that will mark, that glue will mark your fabric. And then the other two sides. Here. Okay, and then the last one. So now we cover inside uh, of our frame. Just take a look at your um, corners and check and go with your fingers like that or use your spatula. I just want you to make sure that, you know, the fabric is very well glued there, okay? Once you have that, the rest is the same we did on the back side, okay? We just need to fold the edges. Uh, just something here, I, ha I can see I have 
if I fold it's almost to the end here it's too big so I can just go ahead and cut if you see you have too much kind of half an inch is the best of fabric here okay then we're gonna do exactly the same as we did before spread the glue on one long edge spread the glue on the corners and then come oops and finish this okay and then press down And if you don't know, I have one free online course that has, you know, lots of information about cartonnage and so many simple projects that you can make with paper, fabric and glue. Okay, so here I have the front of my frame already done as well. Okay, so now what I have to do is pretty simple. Okay, we need to put them together with our art in the, in the middle. But before that, I want to show you some ways we can hang this frame, you know, on the wall. Let me tell you how we can hang this. So, as I said, I like to put a piece of ribbon on the back part because it's easy, okay? And when you have like a nail in the wall, it's easy to find the right position. Th that's the way I like to do and I'm gonna be showing you, you here, but you have uh, other options. Uh, so one of the options would be you finish completely finish your uh, your frame and then you can use something like this okay I have been used not for my frames but I use for clocks and things like that I used to do so it's a picture frame hangers okay so you will be able to add this little piece later on the back of your frame if you press that, you will be able to add this kind of, uh, uh, of thing, okay? Or uh, you can like fold these little parts and you can glue this with super glue, for example, I, I have done this as well. The only thing here, make sure you are putting this in exactly in the middle of your frame, right? Okay, so that's one of the options. Uh, another option, I just found recently and I think I like I didn't make but I'm gonna show you for you uh, is using something like this I think that would be nice right this is a craft holder let me show you I found this one that's uh, yeah but there's other kinds of there okay to hang this kind of art so what I'm, I would be adding uh, my idea, okay, would, would be using two pieces of ribbon and then I would do this, for example, right here and right here. Of course, you will need to measure, okay, you will need to measure from the, 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 the edge, like two inches, one and a half for everyone. And then you could like glue these parts here, okay, and... Uh, you will make sure you have the same distance, okay? I will not do this here in the video, but only show you. Let me put here so you can imagine how it would be. So if you put right there, okay? And then you will be gluing the other part on top so that you have, you have uh, one option for another option, okay? But that must be done right here before gluing front and back together. To have a great finishing in case you make your frame and you know at the end you decide oh I should have done something different then at the end we still can glue this right on the back and glue something over just you know to hide it so it's up to you 
So let's see. I not do that this today, but another day I'm gonna be making and I'll show you to you. Good. So the way I like to do is using a piece of ribbon, like five or six inches. I'm gonna make some marks in my back part. So it is 12 inches, so six inches is my middle, okay? And I like to do one inch from the top, from the top of my from the top of my of my frame, okay? So I here here it's one inch, and then I put one and a half this side and one and a half for the other side, okay? Then I have two points right here, and I'm gonna be using like one paper all oh, or this is you know that you can just make a hole don't need to be to be a big really hole and then you just go there and use those two and make your holes okay so once you have these two do uh, holes done you go right here on the back of your um, on the back of your frame, and you put this inside the hole, kind of. Maybe sometimes the hole is too small; you have to do it a little bigger. Sometimes it's easier. Okay, just like that. Oh, you leave a small border, like one inch here. And then you go to the other side and you do the same. Okay, then I pull a little bit. I don't like that to be super uh, tight but I don't like that to be you know super loose as well just a little bit like this and then here on the bottom I put glue okay and then I glue I put that in a little small piece of masking tape just on the edge get it up Okay, so this way I will be able to hang my, of course not right now, <laughs> the, wet, the, the glue is wet, but I will be able to do that, okay? Uh, another thing you can do, I forget, but you can put something right here on the center and put like a D ring here, okay? And then you can hang, you know, so many options. You can just see whatever you think more comfortable and then do it. So that's the way, if you glue, and if you put glue, and then a piece of masking tape, that will work. Okay, so now I have my back ready to go. Then I have my art, and I'm gonna use my front. And I'm gonna put them all together. Okay, then I have one more thing to say before that, because I have done something different as well. So take a look at this. This is also the same frame. I did the same right here on the bottom with you know, the back with a ribbon. And instead of having an art, I put the vinyl chalkboard. Okay, this is chalkboard vinyl surface. Okay, you can buy this in by the yard, I think, or like this. So I glue that part like exactly I will do here. So instead of being that. I put the, uh, and if I'm not wrong, I did that so long time ago, but I think the, this vinyl is stick in the back, so it's, you just peel and glue here, and then you put the frame, okay? This is one idea. Uh, another idea just came in my, my mind now, because I found this cork at home, and then if instead of using your art, okay, you have here, and then if you cut this cork exactly the size you want, this is too big, but let's say I cut exactly the dimension here, I would 
you know, glue here, and then we have one uh, one cork board. It is small, but depending what you want, can be very, you know, uh, unique. Another idea, if like, let's say you have a brother's can and cut or other candy machine, you can, you know, glue here, you can apply here the name and that can be a gift, you know, or, you know, embellishments, you can do embellishments all around. This is just the starting, you know, you can just have fun and have and make so many different ways. Okay, then let's finish this frame with my arm. Okay, just something I forgot to tell you, but for the finishing, uh, look at your corner. Sometimes, depending on the fabric, uh, you have like a, a piece of fabric that's bothering you. So I like to look at my my corners, like on the front. And if I see that I have one small piece of fabric that's bothering me, then I just go and cut, you know, trim that with scissor. Okay, then this, don't forget, if you put the ribbon, that's the top, you know, of your part. And then I like to put my frame, my front part, right there. And then I like to use and mark here, then I know where my, where will be my, the edges of my um, art, okay, where I will be gluing this part. So here is my art. I already trimmed, but you can see it must be smaller than the back, you know, but bigger than the <laughs> bigger than this part here. Okay, I want just to make sure that my cat will be right there on this side. Okay. So here you have two options. You don't really need to glue this art to the back. Uh, because if you glue the rest, that will be completely, you know, in the right place. Or if you want to make sure, you can just apply a little bit of glue. I will do that and show you. So here is my art. As the way I made, I have one backing piece right here, uh, backing fabric. Okay, and then I will only put is just a little. Okay, just to make sure it will help me to keep in the place. So just a little bit, then I'm gonna put the, I'm not pressing because I want to make sure it is in the right position before I press. If it is not, okay, let me turn it to me. I want to put right there. Oh, now it's perfect. Okay, so once you check and you see it's all in the right position, then you press, okay, so that will be, you can put more glue if you want, you, can, you don't need to put that glue again. You can use, here I said you could use, from now you can use the acid free glue in case you are like worried, yeah, concerned about the school, uh, the Elmer's glue. Okay, I have again one piece of fabric to cut here. Okay, so now here's my art so far, and then last step. Now I'm gonna be applying glue all over the back of this part, and I will be putting a little bit more of glue right now, okay? Okay, so I just go ahead and spread this glue very well. Uh, just making sure, you know, you have enough out on the back. So if you see some space you need more, just apply more. Um, So you can see I like to have a very good amount of glue right here in this part and making sure all the edges you know here are very well spread with glue. Nothing is missing okay because that will be the finishing of your piece. Yeah, I can see I didn't have enough there. Okay now I'm done. Okay so I have a very good amount of glue there so here's my piece, then you just 
put it in the right position. Okay. Just make sure uh, you don't have too much glue as well, right? I like to put in this position so I can make sure it is exactly, you know, uh, they are exactly in the right position. They are the same size. Okay, so you press here over. Press, 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 press. And then now is the time to use some masking tape. Okay, so I put some masking tape like around, but not, not exactly. Ow, because I'm gonna really put something heavy over that. That's the the thing that will help us. So you put out the way. Uh, where I most like to put the masking tape and press very well is like on the edges, okay, on the two uh, four corners you press very well and here in the middle as well because we have that ribbon right so press and press okay. I don't usually go with masking tape right here inside between my art and the frame because we don't need okay so here we have so here I have my uh, quilt art with my cat magic, you know, framing in the fabric the way I want it. Okay, and it is, uh, of course, we need to dry. So, what next? We put right in this position, and then you put something heavy over. Okay, so I, us I usually I put like two heavy books over. Okay, and if you have, if you don't have very big books, you may put something can be even your cutting mat over and then something heavy over and keep like that I really like and recommend to keep it like that overnight so it will be really dry and it will be dry super flat okay so that's why we want you know a good finishing for our fabric frame right so after overnight you remove the masking tape and then you are ready to hang your uh, quilt art or give us a gift, you know, do whatever you want. I hope you like the idea of having fun with paper, fabric and glue and make this amazing fabric frame for your arts. Cartonage is a great technique to use fabric in a different and unique way and make one-of-a-kind handmade gifts. If you want to know more about it, check my website colorwayarts.com. I also have one online school so you can learn from your home. Go to my website and start from there. I would love to hear from you. If you like have any questions or want to send me pictures of your frames, you can contact me direct on my website or comment below. If you have friends that may like to make a fabric frame, please share with them. It's always better having fun with friends, right? <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and I will see you another day. Happy crafting time!